So in The Rise of Superman, Stephen Cutler argues that the remarkable rate of advancement in extreme sports over the latter half of the 20th century is an excellent study of the narrow paths of the in a practical field. So one interesting aspect of his survey in that book is that as soon as a particular record is broken, the odds of it being broken again by someone else in the same discipline appear to increase dramatically, reference 23. Now, Rupert Sheldrake's theory of morphic resonance, reference 24, would predict this behavior, along with similar dynamics in many other fields. So uh, Sheldrake's theory, for those unfamiliar, posits that events occurring increase the likelihood of similar events occurring again. Now, cons if we consider that dynamic in the context of a four-dimensional matrix representing the universe, we could say that when two states appear adjacent in one strata of our four-dimensional matrix, it increases the likelihood that we'll observe adjacent states like them in another strata. Now, cubism is an interpretation of quantum mechanics that offers a very elegant mechanism to explain Dr. Sheldrake's observations. Cubism interprets much of the behavior of quantum systems as subjective, with states such as superposition representing what an agent could reasonably predict about the system in question, reference 25. Now, if a state of states has been observed in proximity at one point in the past, it stands to reason that if one observes them again in a future date, the odds of seeing the others in a familiar conf configuration go up. So um, it may help to conceptually re-examine the nature of non-locality in this context. We typically think of a particle in superposition as being observable at any number of points in space given a specific point in time. We don't think of its coherence as extending across time. But if we think of that as being a a valid way of conceiving of non-locality, then new effects become conceivable. So entanglement across not just spatial but temporal distances would allow for new kinds of information exchange, including the sort of Bayesian predictive models prominent in cubism and morphic resonance. So if we revisit our chess metaphor, if the layout x is most often followed by layout y, then if we observe layout x or y at a given point along our time axis, it helps us draw conclusions about the odds of encountering the other at the adjacent step. Similarly, we observe a particle in space. It allows us to draw conclusions about a particle with which it's entangled. Now, from a Bayesian perspective, Sheldrake's theory of Mortzwick resonance would be a natural consequence of extending quantum mechanics through time. Uh, without the need for a novel energy field. So insofar as cubism is an interpretation that focuses on how we relate to the unknown and through to probability, then consistently appearing next to one another in the past is an excellent indicator that individual states would appear adjacent to one another in the future. So just as atoms are holons that can join together into larger holons like molecules, states are holons that can join together to larger holons like process, and those process can have low energy states the same way that molecules can have low energy states. Now, the more unlikely a given outcome is for an initial state, the narrower the path between the two outcomes. And that may paradoxically increase the learning rate for crossing such a state space, because successfully navigating it once would more strongly adjust the likelihood that any intermediate state which occurred between the first successful crossing uh, and the last, that adjacent states would appear adjacent again if someone makes the same thing. So uh, give an example, if someone is trying to ski down a very difficult ski slope, um, there are only so many adjacent states that can be taken as opposed to skiing down, down a uh, less challenging ski slope. So a chain of events leading to an unlikely outcome has fewer possible states comprising it. And knowing an unlikely outcome occurred provides more information about the chain of events leading to it than a likely outcome, because many different chains of events could have led to a likely outcome. So with this interpretation of cubism, the context of entanglement between temporarily adjacent states could provide uh, not uh, a mechanism for Sheldrake's morphic resonance, as well as Kotler's observation that learning happens more quickly when the sequence of events is less likely. So 
If this version of temporal holonics is accurate, it implies a method for entering flow. If we view the entire time span containing an experiment of flow as a single coherent holon, then the series of actions needed to successfully navigate the space as desired are one of many possible states that could exist between the initiation of the transition and its conclusion. So the skills to potentially take all the correct actions between the beginning and end of a challenge requiring flow need to be present so that the optimal path through probability space exists as potential. And to realize that potential requires an ability to enter coherence with past and future selves. And that makes the unlikely best route through the landscape possible. And uh, to observe those states where anchoring the process would be useful. So much as McFadden and Al-Khalili oppose that useful mutations register in record keeping while useless ones don't, lucky breaks and good ideas may register during flow state while the very many ways that lead to bad outcomes remain unrealized potential. So uh, careful experimentation with directing attention may reveal a method to reliably trigger such transitions. And it would seem likely that if such a transition, such an experiment bears fruit, much of the technique will involve deliberately not observing uh, the ways that an agent could arrive at an undesired outcome.